<laughs> hello, hello, editing. Okay, bye. Well, um, who should who should go first? Because we haven't done this in a long time. Yeah, uh, we we are uh, we speak cinema, and I'm Peter. Um, and I'm um, I'm John. No, I'm, I'm hi everybody. I'm Iwan. Um, hi. and we have a bit of explaining to do. We've been on a hiatus. Uh, we've just been very busy with a lot of things, but we're back for the summer. I'm very excited to be back to all our loyal viewers. Um, so we are here to discuss, as you see in the title, one of the best films, I think, of the 2000s, um, which is... Oh, oh. One Car Wise. In the oh, oh, even oh, backwards. Oh. Even, backwards oh, yeah. uh, even backwards is great, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I mean, I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll just do this. Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't know if uh, you remember, but um, what's his name? Uh, Nathan Hale and um, other YouTubers reviewing films and all that. Yeah, They were doing this sort of uh, challenge saying, oh, if you can name a film from your birth year, your, the, the, your favorite film from your birth year, what would it be? And since I'm a 2000 baby, it's, uh, it's probably this one. Even though, even though Memento was, was released that year, yeah. I'll go with this one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with what you just said. Um, yeah, I mean, I the, this is the first movie or one of the first movies I think on the channel that I can say I told Iwan to watch because I believe that I saw this first and I was like, you got to see this. You got to see this. Film. You did see this first, and uh, you have you had no words when you told me this was about a year, just about a year ago. Yeah, uh, and he had no words to describe this film because it's so visually strike visually striking. Yeah, and it's so good. Um, I don't know how we're going to review this film. No, I don't know either. But I, the <laughs> best way to do it is to just get into it. Yeah. So we we watched it last night. I believe both of us we watched it yesterday. Yes, yes. And uh, we took some notes on it. So we're just gonna go through and share our ideas, our thoughts, our our, our conspiracies, if you will. Um, well, the first thing that uh, we would like to talk about obviously if you've seen even pictures from this film is the color it's the color palette which is being used yeah and also the outfits and the way uh the the different the different dresses of the main actress right our, our miss chan yeah they're just stunning to look at they are it's one of my favorite like you know when i think of costumes in a movie i immediately think of this because her her the colors of her dresses and even the ties as well when you think about it because mm -hmm. of the plot and you know from a different it's they're bought from outside and all that but yeah the costume i even wrote something about the lighting design i said that um it the the lighting it, that it gives me is as if you had like colorful uh, there was a lampshade for example that was red and yeah. because the light bulb is regular light it shines onto the red and then the red be you know it beams off of it so it's not just like something is red. It's something that is colored being lit up in the mm -hmm. room a lot of the time, uh, giving it that color. And it's very like, um, it gives me like this dirty, like uh, smoky environment in this apartment. It's, it's just gorgeous. The atmosphere is just gorgeous in this film. I mean, again, just like you said, the you told me, I think a while ago that this film was not nominated for costume design no at all and it didn't no. win at all no I don't, I don't believe so no and i am so frustrated because again when you look at the dresses of the of the actress she wears the same type of dress but different colors and i mean that's so innovative and yet yeah. the academy couldn't realize the uniqueness of the costume designer it's it, it's sad um I, so from the beginning if we take yeah. it the, yeah. the first thing that I had is uh, it the, the film starts right away. You yeah. know, it I, I said this to you before. I said that uh, I had to check that my TV was not on like five times speed because it was running through the proverbs that you, you're going to talk about. And and the, the just the beginning was so fast that I was like, am I watching this in normal speed? Because you, you go into the apartment with uh, Mrs. Chan and and you're immediately thrown into not chaos, but just the story it doesn't give you time to sit down catch a breath and whatever you're, you're immediately into the into the world 
Yeah, I mean, this is again what I I I talked to. I think it was last year when I mentioned the fact that I love how this movie begins. Begins with quotes, and it begins strong, and it doesn't tell you who says it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. tell you it was a philosopher who said this. It might as well be just Wong Kar Wai saying this, but we are not aware of. Yep. It starts. It sets up the movie so well, uh, and then you're as you said, you smack into the action. Um, you have the uh, Miss Chan just walking into the apartment looking for for um, a, a room to land. Mm-hmm. And then we have Miss, Mr. Chun coming in and he's looking for the same thing. Um, but it's good because in the beginning of the film, for the first 30 minutes or so, you have vignettes. Now, we are not fans of vignette sort of films. Uh, I mean, we've had our share with Vivre Sa Vie by Jean-Luc Godin. And that film is just composed of vignettes. But in this film works because the beginning is vignette. And then as the story progresses, the scenes get longer and longer and longer. And they start sort of making this um, um, a long chain of events link, yeah. being linked to one another. Yeah. And right after the right after we, were, we enter the apartment, um, they, there's a point where they mess up whose stuff it is. Like yeah. whose stuff goes where you know and that's sort of how they first interact with each other which I really like and throughout all of this stuff like you kind of lose a sense of time I feel like throughout the entire movie we we jump through moments in time where uh they might be having a conversation one day and the next conversation might be the next day it might be three days later it's not necessarily specified and I love that about it because it, it gives this timeless aspect to it you yeah know, that you just live it you're living in the moment and you're just you're watching and again the, the with the camera movements it's almost like we're an observer mm-hmm. and like we're not I felt sort of uncomfortably good because I felt like I was observing something that in some points I wasn't supposed to see as the audience member right and the way that the I think I wrote down one of his shots that he uses a lot is that he'll have something close to us uh on the edge of the camera, like mm-hmm. a wall or something. Mm-hmm. And then he'll put our, he'll put the characters in the distance. Mm-hmm. So it seems like we're peering into the room and, and intruding on their conversation almost as, as the audience. And I, I find that incredible. It's I mean, great. two things, uh, referring to the camera angles and the way they are shot and we're not supposed to see. You remember when, when Miss Chan is in Singapore and she's sitting on her bed and she's calling somebody? The yeah. whole shot of the whole shot of the of the scene is through sort of blinds, window window blinds. Yes, blue, yes. Peeking into the yeah into the there, room. there's a point there's a point where uh, I believe she walks into a room and the camera just stays outside the room, even yeah. though we do end up going in the room later. But he lets the shot linger so that maybe we don't see what's going on initially. We don't know who she's talking to initially. We're just hearing the voices. It 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 makes us use our all of our senses to you know to figure out what the story what, what's going on and another aspect about the passage of time is when they're sitting down at the diner and they're having their dates and all yeah i don't know if you've noticed but there's i think it's the first time they're sitting no the second time they're having their date and they're eating and so on and there's a transition happening but if you're not a, but if you don't pay attention to what uh clothes they're wearing you will think it's in the same day and then yesterday when i rewatched it i was like did we just like skip a day? Are we just like like in the yeah. next day or in the next week? Exactly. Like exactly. wow, I love this. Yeah, I love the um, uh, of the scene. Moving forward, uh, there is let's see. Obviously, we got to talk about the music. Um, oh my gosh, the, the, the um, music and how it plays a role in in the story is just fantastic. And you said initially the first thing we hear is these strings yeah that that play throughout and then it changes eventually in the third act sort of to quizás 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 and it is just oh it's so great and I know that you wanted to talk about like the the theme and progressing the plot of how that music works so so when I I first watched this film last year um I liked the usage of the music but I couldn't understand what why are you playing why was Wang Kar Wai playing this sort of music at specific intervals. And when I got into the film, I noted down that I have to pay, uh, I just knew I had to pay attention to the to the music as well. So when we hear the strings, right, which was very which are very melancholic, 
and very uh with like asian influence in the melody um they are played all the time when miss chan is going out to take the noodles from the noodle place right she's right. going out to take dinner and then that's about it that's that's sort of like her theme mm -hmm. in the second act when she's sort of starting dating or dating or seeing mr chun we have um a cerca a cerca timas by another it's another nat king cole um spanish song which which basically translates to come closer to me sort of okay and the 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 reason why the that music is played is to show sort of it's only played when the two are together it's never played independently and when in the in the third act when we are in singapore and i believe it's mr chun i don't remember this one is, is it mr chun who picks up the phone and we know that it's miss chun calling and that's when we when we hear for the first time the nat king call so it's uh let me see because it's mr i believe it's mr cho is the because they don't have the same last name no well one is with Ch one, one is chan and one is chan with a u is it yeah i believe pretty sure so uh, then so then uh that's when we hear nat king cole's kisas and and when we hear the song and the lyrics of the songs are along the lines of what am i what are you doing all day but thinking 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 um and I'm just losing the day, you know, who knows, who knows, who knows. That's what mm -hmm. Kisas means. And it's all so about you, the relationship. You have uh, Mr. Chow Mowan. Chow, okay. And Miss Su Li Zhen, I believe. But because she's married, it's Mrs. Chan. I believe that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, but the way, if, if, you, if you saw this in the subtitles, they don't use, they just use Chan. And then Chun, for some other reason. Yeah. Um, so another thing is that <laughs> this is where your theory comes in. Um, we never, as the audience, get to see their significant others in the film. No. And I think it makes it so much better for that reason. That, that it, again, it's like it's going be, be, behind closed doors. We have our characters interacting with them. There are moments in the film where this happens, but we don't get to see them. And Wong Kar Wai specifically does not allow us to see them for a reason. And 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 Iwan has a theory on this that, that I yeah, think so is rather interesting. When I was watching the film, I was I was just about, I think it was like 20 minutes in when we are sort of us, we're figuring as the audience, we figured out there is something going on between miss uh mr chun's wife and somebody else we don't know yet that it's that is uh mrs chun's husband and i came up to the conclusion that the reason why we don't see the faces of the two spouses it's because um they have sort of the same faces as their opposite spouse like the, their the opposite how should I put this? The opposite family, right? So Mrs. Chan's husband has the same face of Mr. Chan and Mr. Chan's wife has the same face as Mrs. Chan. But because there's no, con there's no true connection between them, they, uh, they can never really see what's the difference in between them. So that's why we go back to the diner scene the first time. Yes, and, that's and my next they, thing as well. Yeah. And they sit down, right? Yeah. And, and they order each other's significant other's favorite meals. Yeah, because uh, what is it? Miss Chan had the menu and was like, just order for me. He was like, yeah. why? Just order for yeah. me whatever your your wife likes. Yeah. And I was like, that's sort of odd. Yes, yeah. But but it's odd in a good way, like because yeah. that just it reminds me of funnily enough, um, worst person in the world which came out i believe this year or last year and how like that film was very strange in its approach to love and and yeah. how the characters interacted and here we have them almost acting like each other's significant other in this diner saying listen you order for for me what your wife likes because kind of right now i'm your wife and even though we're not both acknowledging it this is what's happening 
Mm -hmm. And we don't want to acknowledge it because we don't want to acknowledge that we're falling in love because our, our husband and wives are out there doing whatever mm -hmm. We come to realize that they are also having an affair because of the tie and the bag situation. I and that that's, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that, yeah. that's a perfect way of, of showing and not telling situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it's yeah oh my god it's such a, it's such a good reveal and it makes the film so much better that that happens because we could have just had a film where their husband and wives are doing whatever they're out of the country on business and these two people are sort of cheating on each other and falling in love because they don't see their significant other that's great that's a good plot line but to make it so that it's happening in both parties is it it takes it up another level and he really really killed it with that in that sense um again Wong Kar Wai is such a sweet talker. You know, there's a point where he's, uh, Mr. Chow or Chun uh, says, I had nothing to do, so I wanted to hear your voice. You know, when he's yeah. calling her on the phone and it's just like, it, it hits it hits right here. Um, let's see, uh, the shot, I love the shot where he's leaning against the wall in the alleyway, which is, plays a part, a big part in the story. And it's mm -hmm. just raining, you know, and they, they both have that one spot where there's like a covering over it where they stand and it doesn't rain. I felt that that was brilliant. And then we finally get about halfway through the film, my favorite quote from the movie, Ooh. which is, um, uh, he says, I sometimes wonder what I'd be if I hadn't been, if I hadn't married. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of that? Mm -hmm. And she says, maybe happier. And I simply ascend. I ascend into the sky because he's talking about an occupation. He's not talking about his feelings. He's talking about his job. And she yeah. says, maybe happier. And it just breaks me. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, because then you come to realize that really Mr. Chan only cares about his job. I mean, we see that he goes to Singapore. He doesn't really care anymore of sitting in Hong Kong, having this sort of love affair with Miss, Miss Chan. Yeah. And Miss Chan, she just wanted a good family. She wanted a good husband. So you see, we are seeing two different poles, you know, two different people. Yeah. Um, uh, last couple things real quick. Uh, he loves using mirrors, Wong Kar Wai. Lots of mirror shots. Really? Whether the mirrors are dirty, whether, the, whether we're looking through, at someone through the mirror, a lot of that was, going, was taking place throughout the film. I, I didn't notice. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, uh, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention to that, but lots I, of mirrors. I, I don't know this. If anyone has seen 2046 or any of his other filmography, we're still trying to figure out what this is. And, and I love that. I don't know, because there's a point where a door closes in the film and it says 2046 on the door. And I believe that that, that that's his next film because it came out in 2004 and this one came out in 2000. So I think it's an Easter egg and I don't know if he meant to do it, but I, I you see, I, I told you this. I, I haven't I haven't seen the 20. I don't know where you saw the number. I haven't it, seen it. I'm telling you, it happens somewhere. And next time you watch it, you got to look out for it. Um, you know, I, what I also love is um, uh, toward, before we move to Singapore, right? Yeah. And that's like Singapore is the last 15 minutes of the film. It's a yeah. very short act. I love the, um, the, 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 sh the short, again, uh, transition with the quote which says nothing nothing was as it used to be yep like nothing of the past ever came up to be again so we can sort of think that the affair between the spouses never happened from both sides uh since mr chow mr chun moves to singapore mm -hmm. um and then also at the end and he has has such an interesting meaning and yes I to talk to you about yeah 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 i because, i did want to bring that up because he goes to cambodia and then he goes and he talks into the hole mm -hmm. and then he stuffs it with with earth right he yeah. starts stuff stuffs it That's... Yeah, but i i have a different interpretation of that okay uh because the first time i watched it i was like what what is he doing like why uh, what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing you know, type of situation. And this time what I wrote down, uh, to me, I prefer this explanation better because the, the whole idea, I think, of the of the holes in the wall is yeah. so that you can tell your secret. It's so yeah. that you can, you can say something so that it doesn't, you don't have this guilt or whatever into yeah. the wall and whatever, yeah. and it stays there. And it's sort of like, it's almost religious in a way. Yes. Um, so I wrote down that after he tells his secret, 
there is now natural growth and we can move on and he can move on in his life, which is represented through the roots coming out of the, the hole is how I interpreted it. Well, the roots, it's, it's just grass. It is. But, yeah. But you know, I, the only reason I wrote that down was because when he, when he whispers it into the hole, there's no grass, there's nothing, it's empty. And when he finally reveals his secret, there's a growth, there's life. You mm. can move on now as a character. You, mm. He doesn't live with this guilt any longer and he can move on with his family and whatever happened in the past stays in the past. And he has, he has made progress. That's how I like to think of it. I like that. I actually do. Uh, yeah. the, only, the only downside of this film, so if we can call it a downside, I mean, it yeah. didn't really annoy me. It's just at the end, you sort of entering sort of in a documentary sort of yeah. style. I mean, you have footage of French footage of President de Gaulle visiting Cambodia. And then after um, Mr. Chan leaves the temple, uh, mm -hmm. we just see architectural pictures um, of the temple itself. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm not a fan of what I saw. Yeah. I like the way it's, no, I'm a fan of what I saw. I like, I like architecture. I like the, the culture and all, but I just am not a fan of seeing that. It, I don't think it's an appropriate really ending. Like the ending should have just stayed with the whole stuff. Yeah. That's it. Cut, yeah. Cause and, yeah, I know. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like the same movie. It feels like we're moving on to something different. We're moving. Exactly. When it yeah. should just remain on our two characters and their yeah. relationship and all that. But I mean, overall, overall this is, yeah. if you have not seen this film, we can't recommend it enough. I mean, this is why we're reviewing it. This is why we're telling you guys about it. Um, uh, to, uh, one question, though. Um, yeah. You said that there is a problem. When you watch this, you, you watched it were you using this or you are... You are I watched it using it? this because I had heard that from the box set, uh, there might, I think there's an issue with In the Mood for Love. I don't know if this is a rumor, but apparently either it stops for a few seconds somewhere in the second act or, or it, or it like cuts and it it, it it i don't know what it is but that's what i heard so next time when i watch this film i'm gonna watch it on there and see if that's true or not and if it is criterion you better recall all of this and give yeah. another ten dollar yeah and, spo and sponsor us because we made everyone aware of this uh here you go sponsor this. so sponsor. this is a five for me out of oh, five five for me as well uh fantastic film one car why great direction all that stuff you have seen uh fallen angels and you've seen chunking express yeah i have this is the only one car why thing that i've seen oh god that's like and this great. summer i'm gonna go further and i want to go and watch most of his most of his film yeah. most of his renowned films. what would you recommend to the general public peter about well, i would recommend i would definitely recommend chunking express over fallen angels mm -hmm. i think it's a more uh important film to see it also has more of like a cult following than any of his other films Ch mm -hmm. like when you hear chunking express like tarantino loves it it's it's a very like uh it's a very almost the pulp fiction of asia or that type of film fallen angels is a little lower for me personally than these two films the chunking express and in the mood for love those are fives like no question and then i'm gonna also go into his filmography uh dive into it and I might do a end of the end of the summer review overall of the box set and just box. yeah that'll be great that'll yeah. be that'll be awesome. Last thing before we go because we have we forgot to talk about this. Um, yeah. I think the the actors in this film they look they look beautiful. Yeah, all, all of them. It doesn't yeah. matter. But the the actress herself, which is Maggie Maggie Chung Man Young. Um, no, no, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, Maggie Chung, Man Young, yes. Yeah. Um, probably the most wonderful, most beautiful Asian actress I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, but her performance as well is is great. Like it's it's definitely overlooked. Um, probably one of the best female performances of that year, most likely. Um, yeah, I, there's not there's not much else to say. You know, I mean, again, as as we warned during the beginning of the review, we we don't know how to review this problem, mm -hmm. this film specifically, because, because again, it's hard unless you've seen it. So yeah. if you haven't seen this film and you have dared to watch this review, good for you. Subscribe and um, go and watch the film because 
um, I'm telling you, these are one of the films where you, as a, as a cinephile, if you haven't seen, they're going to sort of um, blow you away yeah. and sort of change your perspective on not only Asian cinema, but also cinema on its own. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of those uh, films that is like a hidden gem in the Criterion Collection. Yeah. There's not many films in the Criterion Collection that are standalone before this box set came out, standalone like films that I am obsessed with. You know, I, I consider a lot of the Criterion films very well done and very well made and so so important to cinema but this is one of the films specifically that i am absolutely obsessed with that i found through the criterion collection i'm so glad for it it it, it truly let it just broadened my perspective of what mm-hmm. could be what could be done on the screen yeah so um thank you for listening thank you everybody i hope you've enjoyed again our small but very concise review of none other but in the mood for love mm-hmm. there we go and uh hopefully we'll do more videos in this summer and talking about this definitely so uh, uh you everybody? know as they say right uh, that's a wrap as they say that's a wrap